I've read my fourth book for my 2024 reading challenge. For this one, I had to pick a book from those I already own, but it had to be a book on the written language. Now, I must be honest here, the book I'm going to talk about today was not my first choice. I had another one in my piles that I tried first. I rarely DNF a book but I had to do that with the first one I tried. Either it was way over my head or the author was just too poetic in his descriptions for me to really understand what he was talking about. I just couldn't do it. I'm not going to talk about that one. I'm not even going to tell you which one it is because I don't want to turn you off a book that may be perfect for you. In this video, I'm going to talk about the book that I actually did read. Hi there, I'm Linda Maxey, the author of the Library Lynn Guides to Superlative Nonfiction Books and the author of an upcoming women's paranormal fiction novel. I set my own reading challenge this year. Before I read anything else, I had to take 10 books off my massive to-be-read pile. It's really out of control. I just sat down one day and came up with a list of 10 categories that I had to read a book from before I could start reading any other fiction books. This is my attempt at exercising self-control, y'all. I've already done book reviews for three of these books. One was on creativity, one was on Krakatoa, and one was on racism. You can find those in playlists below. And as I've said, the one that I'm discussing today had to have something to do with the written word. And the book I read was Writing Down the Bones, Freeing the Writer Within, by Natalie Goldberg. The book was published in 1986 by Shambhala in Boston. Natalie Goldberg is a real writer, and by that I mean writing is part of who she is. She can't help doing it. And like many writers, for a while she had to take non-writing jobs to make ends meet. Goldberg chose to teach writing, so she calls on what she taught and what she learned from writing for this book. Now, this book is not a step-by-step -step manual on how to write, nor is it part memoir, part writer's journey. It's really unlike any other book on writing I've ever read. At the time this book was written, Goldberg was a woman who was of Jewish heritage, which of course she still is, but she had spent years as a practicing Buddhist. Her Buddhist training influenced her much more than her Jewish heritage, although at one point in the book she admits being drawn now to that heritage, and she says that's a good thing. And I agree with her. I think examining where we came from gives us lots to write about. But this book is more like a series of essays that can be read in any order. The essays are short, as short as one page long to as many as five pages long, and all of them can be read quickly. Their subject matter is quirky, but it all pertains to writing. And it's not about writing safe poetry or prose, although Goldberg has a lot of experience writing both. But no, she talks about how to bring up what's real inside yourself. You don't do that by banging out a book every now and then. You do it through practice, she says. Lots and lots of practice. She has all sorts of exercises that she gives her students, and she shares those too. I linked one that I saw d demonstrated by Ann Jansen's channel just last night. I've tried some of the exercises already, and I found them really helpful. She suggests that you write every day if you can. Not writing to share with the world, but writing just for yourself. She says get a stack of cheap notebooks and sit your butt in a chair and write anywhere from 15 minutes to an hour at a stretch. Don't worry about punctuation or word choice. Just find a prompt about absolutely anything and write. Don't censor. Just right. Now, I've been doing this for a week now, and I'm finding it so liberating. I've tried following Judith Cameron's excellent advice about keeping morning pages for years, but something about writing about what's going on in my life always stymied my efforts to just continue writing about whatever. It just didn't work for me. So now I write one page in my journal about what's going on in my life when I first get up, then I read, eat my breakfast, straighten up the house, and after that, I go into my study and pull out my writing practice notebook and write for 20 minutes. And I've been astounded at how much better I feel about my writing and even my life. When I sit down to write my novel now, I don't get stymied. I've already primed the pump, so to speak, and the words just seem to come. Where did I get my topics? Well, Goldberg suggests that you come up with your own list. 
That's beneficial all on its own, she says. So I did. One of my first practice sessions was coming up with topics to write about for 20 minutes. I just scribbled down topics to write about. And I, I chose all kinds of things like, why do I love chocolate? And what do I think is the meaning of life? I came up with around 80 in all. I could have done more and I uh, will come up with more if I ever run out. But the cool thing about it is you can write on the same topic over and over and over again. As Goldberg says, you're not the same every day. Your life isn't static. Your thoughts aren't static. You can come up with a completely fresh take on one topic over and over again. And how exciting is that? I haven't gotten to this part yet, but I'm looking forward to it. She says when you complete your notebook, you need to sit down with it just like you would if you were reading a novel. Have an ink pen or a highlighter in your hand and make note of anything that strikes you as good writing. In this way, you, you build up your own private stock of good inspirational writing to turn to when you need it. And that strikes me as both fun and brilliant. So yes, the book is about writing. But like all books, it's about more than that too. She's also talking about spiritual growth here. Her exercises and the writing that you do take you to the heart of yourself, to the heart of your own truth. And that's what life's all about, growing, learning, and getting closer to reality. What a gift. She encourages us to really pay attention to what's going on around us. No matter what it is, it's real, and the details do matter. She urges us to stop and really look to listen, to smell, to taste, and to touch, and then try to recapture those experiences in words. That's the way to make readers care about what you have to say. This is a kind, caring, nurturing book. I loved every bit of it. Reading it actually brought me joy. I looked forward to sitting down every afternoon to read from it. Reading it to me was like listening to a wise and caring friend who truly cares about my well-being. Not whether or not I sell tons of books, but what the writing does for me as a person and how I can use my writing to connect with other people and help them understand that they're not alone. So do I recommend this book? You probably already guessed, yes. If you're interested in writing poetry, fiction, or nonfiction, for whatever reason, I recommend this book. Like Stephen Pressfield's book, The Art of War, it's about getting your work done. But where his book is about any kind of creative endeavor, hers really does focus on writing. This is a book I plan to keep on my desk and pull out whenever I feel like I need inspiration. The nice thing is, I believe inspiration can be drawn from it no matter where you dip into it. I highly, highly recommend it to writers. It may be the best overall book on writing I've ever read. So that's it for me today. Are you a writer? Have you ever read this book? If you have, what did you think? Do you have another book that you would recommend on writing? Let me know your thoughts below. And until next time, happy reading.